Hello everyone, welcome to this unit. In this video, which has two sections, I'm going to talk in the first section about the Bader charge analysis using VASP, and in the second section about the charge density difference plot using VESTA. So by listening to this video, we will learn how to perform Bader charge analysis for our target systems and uh, then how to plot charge density difference of the system using Wessler. So I will start with Bader charge analysis using VASP. Richard Bader from McMaster University developed an intuitive way of dividing molecules into atoms. His definition of an atom is based purely on the electronic charge density. Bader uses what are called zero flux surfaces to divide atoms. A zero flux surface is a two dimensional surface on which the charge density is a minimum perpen perpendicular to the surface. Typically, in a molecular system, the charge density reaches a minimum between atoms, and uh, this is a natural place to separate atoms from each other. Besides being an intuitive scheme for visualizing atoms in molecules, Bader's definition is often useful for charge analysis. For example, the charge enclosed within the Bader volume is, is a good approximation to the total uh, electronic charge of an atom. The charge distribu distribution can be used to determine multiple moments of interacting atoms or molecules. Bader's analysis has also been used to define the hardness of atoms which can be used to quantify the cost of removing charge from an atom. So the first step of the Bader charge analysis is uh, making our desired geometry either through geometry relaxation or experiments or any other method of uh, our choice. If we don't have a relaxed or optimized geometry, we need to first relax our geometry using BASP. Postcar, Podcar, and K-point files are dependent on the system that we are going to relax. We need to use the corresponding podcar file for our system with uh, the exchange and correlation functional that we desire, for example, PBE or LDA, and dense enough k-point grids in the k-point file, and the atomic position of our structure should be determined in postcar file. For the INCAR file, there are many tags that uh, we can use in the INCAR file, depending on uh, the structure. For example, if the structure has magnetization, we need to set the corresponding tags associated with the magnetization. Here I, I will explain just some important and general items that is always required to be considered for the geometry optimization. The first one uh, is uh, PREC or mm, PREC, which specifies the precision mode. The PREC tag determines the energy cutoff if the energy cutoff is not specified in the INCAR file in the addition to the fast Fourier transforms grids, such as uh, NGX or, or NGY or NGZ. For an accurate stress tensor, the energy cutoff uh, should be increased manually. And uh, if additionally very accurate forces are required, PREC equals accurate uh, can be used in combination with an increased uh, cutoff uh, of Podcar file. I always recommend to specify the energy cutoff EN cut manually in the INCAR file to avoid incompatibilities between the calculations. Well, uh, EN cut specifies the cutoff energy for the plane wave basis set in electron volt. It depends on the element that uh, you have in your system, and I always recommend setting 130% uh, of the largest cutoff energy from Podcar file in your INCAR file, which is always safe. For example, cutoff energy of oxygen is 400 electron volt in PBE functional, and I set 130% uh, of uh, 400 electron volt, that is 520 electron volt in the INCAR file. 
this is just an example and it's quite depends uh, on what type of element you have in your system. In SW, it sets uh, the maximum number of the ionic steps. Here in SW equals to 500, it means that uh, the maximum number of ionic steps is 500. Within each ionic step, at most, the maximum number of electronic self-consistency steps, electronic self-consistent loops are performed unless the convergence uh, criterion, which is determined by EDIFF, uh, is matched before. Uh, the convergence criterion, which is determined by EDIFF, as I said, is uh, the global break condition for the electronic self-consistent loop. Uh, exact hellman finman forces and stresses are calculated for each ionic step. Well, uh, EDIFF specifies the global break condition for the electronic self-consistent loop, as I said. The relaxation of the electronic degrees of freedom will be stopped if the total, uh, if the total energy change between two steps is uh, smaller than uh, EDIFF. EDIFF equals to 10 to minus 6 uh, is safe enough, and it depends on what accuracy you are looking for. The next tag is EDIFFG, which defines the break condition for the ionic relaxation loop. If the change in the total or free energy is smaller than EDIFFG between two ionic steps, relaxation will be stopped. The default value in VASP is 10 times EDIFF, but negative value has a different meaning for EDIFFG. In this case, the relaxation will stop uh, if all forces are smaller than the absolute value of EDIFFG. This is usually a more convenient setting, and I always uh, use the negative value for the break condition of the ionic relaxation loop. ICIF determines uh, which degrees of freedom, uh, for example, ions, cell volume, or cell shape, are allowed to change. And ICIF equals to 3 means all the ions uh, and cell volume and cell shapes uh, should be changed to reach the optimized geometry. It depends uh, on what you are seeking, and please refer to the manual of VAS to have a right choice uh, for your system. Well, now we have an optimized structure. The second step is performing an electronic self-consistent calculations. We need to use our optimized structure in the first step by copying the CONTCAR file to the POSCAR file. And then we need to perform the electronic self-consistent calculations with the same K point and POSCAR file of the first step. Then we need to make uh, some changes uh, in our in-car file uh, with the following keywords. NSW equals to zero, uh, which means only electronic self-consistent calculations should be performed, and we don't need to change the geometry. L charge determines uh, whether the charge densities, uh, such as uh, CHG car and uh, CHG files, are written or not. We will turn this tag on to get the CHG car and CHG files. Well, we need also to turn uh, LAECG on by setting this tag equals true. By turning this tag on, VASP will reconstruct the all electron charge density on the so called fine fast Fourier uh, transform grid. In fact, for LAECHG equals true, VAS will reconstruct three distinct all electron charge densities. The first one uh, is the core charge density, which will be written to AEC car zero. The second one is the protoatomic balance charge density or overlapping atomic charge densities, which will be written to AEC car one. And the last one is the self-consistent uh, uh, valence charge density, which will be written to AEC CAR2. The first uh, two of these files, uh, AEC CAR0 and 1, are written at the start of the run. 
However, the last one, AEC card 2, is written at the end after self-consistency has been reached. Well, after performing uh, electronic self-consistent calculations, we have uh, AEC card 0, 1, and 2. Uh, as I said before, core charge density will be written to AEC card 0, and valence charge density will be written to AEC card 2. So in this step, we need to sum the core charge and the valence charge densities to get the electron charge densities uh, 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 in, into the output file, uh, which is uh, CH car sum. These two charge density files, uh, core charge density and valence charge densities, uh, can be summed using the chgsum.pl script. Uh, the only things that we need to do is uh, putting the chgsum.pl script uh, into the same folder of uh, our electronic self-consistent calculation, which is already included uh, the AEC CAR 0, 1, and 2 files. This script can be found uh, from the link that is provided in the description section of this video below, and also, I will show you how you can get this script from the web page uh, in the next few slides. Well, in order to get the chgsum.pl script, you need to go to the Henkelman Group web page and uh, click on the code uh, section up here. And then uh, after clicking uh, this section, you will, you will go to the next uh, page and the uh, VTST tools uh, here, you need to go to this section to get uh, a chgsum.pl. And after clicking to the VTST tools, uh, you will go to the next uh, page. Uh, and under the scripts, you can download all the scripts that is provided. Uh, there are many scripts, and but you need only uh, chgsum.pl. After downloading this uh, zip file, you can uh, get the chgsum.pl script uh, that uh, we need to sum the ch charge and the core charge density and valence charge densities. And the output file, as you can see here, is the chgcar.sum. So, uh, sorry, chgcar uh, underscore sum. So as I said, uh, I will put uh, the link uh, of uh, downloading this uh, script below in the description section, but you can go also uh, to this web page and get uh, this script. After getting this script, uh, we need to place the chgsum.pl script into the corresponding folder. As you can see here, I put uh, this script in the same folder in addition to other files. Then uh, the only thing that we need to do to obtain the summation of the core, uh, uh, core and valence charge densities and the chg car underscore sum is typing the chgsum.pl space aec car zero space ac AEC card 2 in the terminal with the same directory of our folder. Then the total charge densities, which is the summation of the core and valence charge densities, will be written to the to this file uh, chg car underscore sum. As you can see here, by using this script, we can obtain the summation of the core and valence charge densities of our atoms in the system. Now we have the summation of the core and valence charge densities uh, of all elements in the CHG car underscore sum. The next step is to run the Bader charge analysis program. To do so, uh, we need to obtain first the, um, the binary of the Bader analysis program. To get this program, we need to go to the Henkelman group webpage again, and uh, in the download section, uh, we can download the program with the Linux platform here, as you can see. Well, after downloading the Bader charge analysis program, we need to place the Bader program in uh, our corresponding folder, 
which all the files including uh, chg car underscore sum in addition to other files such as aec car 0 1 and 2 are involved in order to make the bader program executable we need to run first the command this command in the, our terminal chmod plus x bader then the bader analysis can be done on the total charge density file using the command uh, which is written here bader space chg car space dash ref space chg car underscore sum keep in mind that uh, it's important to use a fine fast Fourier transform grid to accurately reproduce the uh, correct total charge uh, total core charge it's essential uh, to do a few calculations and uh, increasing the NGXYZF uh, until the total charge is correct. Well, uh, by running the Bader program, three output files of ACF.dat, AVF.dat, and VCF.dat uh, will be generated. ACF.dat, which is important for us for Bader charge analysis, contains a summary of Bader charge analysis uh, and contains the coordinates of each atom, x, y, and z, uh, the charge associated with, uh, with it according to the Bader partitioning, and the percentage of the whole according to Bader partitioning uh, and the minimum distance to the surface. The distance should be compared to maximum cutoff radius for the core region if pseudopotentials have been used. And the last one is the atomic volume. PCF.dat is uh, contains uh, the co coordinates of each Bader maxima, the charge within that volume, the, the nearest atom, and the distance to that atom. And AVF.dat contains the number of each volume that has been assigned to each atom. So as I said, the only file that is important for us and is required for Bader charge analysis is ACF.dat. And we need the information in the charge section of the ACF.dat for further analysis. So the last step of the Bader charge analysis is uh, finding the Bader net atomic charges. To calculate the Bader net atomic charges uh, of each atom in our system, we need to deduct the Bader population printed in ACF.dat, the values, as I said, you know, the values in the column of the charge from the Zval. And the Zval uh, va uh, value printed in Podcar file which is uh, the atomic number minus the uh, number frozen core. So you can find the Z-well in, uh, in, in, in the corresponding podcast file and the Bader population, which is printed in ACF.dat. So by deducting the Bader population printed in ACF.dat from the Z-well, from uh, podcast file, you can find the Bader net atomic charge for each atom in your system. Well, uh, the methodology described so far to calculate Bader net atomic charges requires uh, some manual works. There is also an alternative approach to perform the free charge mold program to compute the density derived electrostatic and chemical DDEC net atomic charges and atomic multiples for periodic and non-periodic systems and bond orders. The link of download of this program is provided below in the description section. The program performs atomic population analysis to determine density-derived electrostatic and chemical DDEC uh, net atomic charges, atomic spin moments and bond orders, and analyzes electron and spin density distributions generated uh, by a quantum chemistry. The only things that we need to do is uh, just following uh, steps one and two above as uh, before explained. And then we have only one remaining step. Uh, we need to place the uh, core charge density and the valence charge density, AEC CAR0 and AEC CAR2, 
and the chg car file and the pod car files into a directory along with the job underscore control.txt file and run the program. I will explain how to make a job underscore control.txt file uh, uh, briefly in the next slide and please see the charge more pro program manual at the above link uh, for details on how to set up the job underscore control.txt file. So here is an example of job underscore control.txt and example for vast files. So the first section is uh, for specifying the net charge of the unit cell. Defaults uh, to zero if nothing is specified. Uh, so the next section is regarding the periodicity along A, B, and C vectors. So the, for the vast uh, uh, files, which we use the periodicity in all the vect for all the vectors, uh, we don't need to change it, and it always should be true. And uh, this section is for specifying where the atomic densities are located. And uh, the next section is regarding the charge type uh, that should be DDEC3 or 6. Please uh, refer to the manual to get more information about the difference between these two types, charge type, DDEC3 or DDEC6. And if we need to Calculate the bond orders, we need to specify it through in this section, otherwise we don't need to mention it here. So this is an example for, uh, for vast files of uh, job under control.txt file uh, for running the, uh, uh, that program. And all the information for charge mode program is provided in the manual and uh, please refer to the manual to get more information. Now in this section I'm going to talk about how we can plot charge density difference using VESLA. We generally define the charge density difference of system AB as uh, charge density difference equals the charge density of system AB minus uh, charge density yeah, of system A minus charge density of system B. In vast, three calculations should be performed to obtain the charge density of uh, A, B, A, and B systems. Indeed, we need three CHG card files which contains the information about the charge density for these three different systems to could plot charge density difference of uh, A, B system. Keep in mind that in uh, calculation of the latter two quantities, uh, system A and B, the atomic positions must be fixed as those they have in the uh, AB system, and it's very important and necessary to take into account. Let's uh, start with the explanation of geometry optimization of systems A, B, and AB. I suppose that the geometry optimization is performed. Briefly speaking, uh, we need first to optimize our AB system and after that uh, then perform only electronic self-consistent calculations for systems A and B. NSW uh, should be zero for the electronic self-consistent calculations as I explained before and L charge tag should uh, turn on in order to get the CH G car files, the uh, charge density files. For the three calculations of charge density of A, B, and A, B systems, in car and K points files are the same, and post car files should be prepared separately, as well as the corresponding uh, pod car files. Uh, let me explain more with one example that lead to a better understanding. We are going to plot the charge density difference in a system including uh, carbon monoxide adsorbed on the platinum uh, 111 surface. The first step is making the platinum uh, supercell 2 uh, cross 2 and optimize the geometry. 
which is system uh, which is called system B. The bottom two atomic layers are fixed, as you can see here, while other atomic layers are allowed to relax in the surface. When the geometry optimization is, is finished, CONTCAR file is uh, obtained. Uh, we take the CONTCAR file, which includes the relaxed at uh, atomic positions of the surface for system AB, which uh, carbon monoxide uh, molecules are added on top of the surface. So we need to use the same corresponding PODCAR file for each system based on their elements. Then after adding the carbon monoxide, uh, carbon monoxide molecule on top of the surface, we should relax the AB system, which is the uh, CO molecule, molecule absorbs on the platinum uh, 111 surface and take the CONTCAR file for other steps. As you can see here, uh, uh, carbon monoxide adsorbed on the platinum uh, surface 111. And uh, this is the uh, uh, relaxed structure of AB uh, system. To perform the electronic self-consistent calculation of uh, carbon monoxide molecule system A, we need to copy the CONTCAR file, the relaxed structure of AB system, which is platinum uh, surface 111, and adsorb the uh, carbon monoxide molecule to POSCAR file in another folder and delete the platinum atoms. As you can see here, we already deleted the platinum atoms and we have only two types of atoms, carbon and oxygen. Now we have only the atomic position of uh, carbon uh, monoxide molecule, which is relaxed on top of the surface. POSCAR file should uh, match the POSCAR uh, uh, file only including carbon and oxygen atoms. K point file should be the same as AB system and perform electronic self consistent calculations by setting NSW equals to zero and uh, uh, and also we need to get the CHG uh, car charge density file of uh, carbon monoxide molecule which is relaxed on the surface. To obtain the charge density of platinum uh, 111 surface system B, we need to do the same as we did for uh, carbon monoxide molecule system A. Perform the electronic self consistent calculation of platinum 111 surface system B. We need to copy the CONTCAR file, the relaxed structure of AB system, which is a platinum surface and adsorb carbon monoxide molecule to POSCAR file in another folder and this time delete the carbon monoxide molecule. Now we have only the atomic position of platinum. Uh, 111 surface, which is relaxed on uh, uh, in the case of adsorb uh, carbon monoxide uh, molecule on its top. POSCAR file should match the POSCAR uh, only including platinum atoms, and the K point file should be the same as AB system and perform electronic self consistent calculations again by setting NSW equals to zero. And also, we need to get the CHG car file charge densities uh, of the platinum surface. After performing all these three calculations, we have three different charge file densities, CHG car files. We need only these three files together in one folder. And the next step is the utilizing the software of Vesta to make a subtract and plot the charge density difference. So we have the charge car files, uh, CHG car file uh, of carbon monoxide. We have the charge density file, CHG car file of platinum, and also AB system, which is included the uh, surface and absorb the carbon monoxide molecules. It's very easy to get the charge density difference using Vesta, and we need first open the charge density file of AB system, uh, which is the carbon monoxide absorbed on the platinum surface, CHG car uh, underscore COPT uh, by Vesta, as you can see here.
then we need to go to the edit section and then edit data and then uh, volumetric data we need to click on the volumet uh, volumetric data as you can see here then we need to import other two systems by clicking import here and go to the folder uh, that all these three files are placed and located and select uh, CHG car underscore uh, CO which is a charge density file of uh, carbon monoxide and then click open then we need to select subtract from current data as you can see here and uh, also in this section we can change the unit in some cases we need to use the raw data and but in some other cases if we are looking for other units uh, we can change the units please keep in mind that the unit of the charge density in uh, CHG car file is electron uh, bore uh, to minus 3 and then we need to click OK after subtracting the charge density file of the carbon monoxide system from AB system, which is the carbon monoxide absorbed on platinum surface, we need to repeat the same steps and select this time CHG car platinum and repeat all the steps again. We need to import the charge density file of platinum uh, system here now we have all the three files here and we subtracted system a and b from the charge density of system a b and after that we need to click ok here again as you can see here the iso surface of charge density difference is obtained and uh, the amount of uh, electron that uh, localize or delocalize on carbon monoxide molecule which is absorbed on platinum surface is uh, uh, obtained here. Uh, so uh, by clicking on to the property section, we can modify this as a surface uh, plot uh, and uh, get the desired uh, and the different quality of the charge and city difference that we are uh, looking for. The minimum and maximum values of the ESO surface uh, can be determined here and uh, this section is the ESO surface level that the bigger value uh, is for a smaller ESO surface and a smaller val value is for bigger ESO surface. And also we can uh, tune the opacity uh, in this section. In a word, we can modify uh, the properties of the surface, uh, whatever we like, and uh, uh, play with these values and uh, colors uh, to get uh, the charge density plot that we want to get. After obtaining the charge density difference plot that we want, we need to export the uh, image uh, and uh, we need to go to the file and export the raster image and uh, then select the format uh, whatever uh, we like and save uh, in the directory we desire the format of png is always good and we need to select it and uh, put the value in the range of three to five uh, in the box here and then click ok now we have the final figure of the charge density uh, plot uh, of uh, carbon monoxide absorbed on the platinum surface and uh, this is a side view of the ESO surface and also we can uh, always export other views of the ESO surface by turning the surface and the structure in vessel. In order to get two dimensional slides we need to go to the utilities sections and then to the data display and then select the platinum carbon and oxygen atoms and then click a slice here and uh, then you can calculate uh, the best plane by clicking the calculate the best plane for the selected atoms uh, or you can change you can specify uh, what uh, what plane that uh, you want here and then click OK.
Now the only things that uh, you need to do is playing with the values in these two boxes. You can click on the contour here and get another box here and play with these values and change these values to get different range of contours of your you know, charge density uh, plots uh, in different in the slice that the, you selected already and change these values here the minimum and maximum values of the ESO surface is here and uh, just play with these value to get uh, whatever you want and what uh, you you want to get from the charge density uh, plot I would like to thank you for uh, listening to this video and I hope that I could explain how to perform better charge analysis using VASP and uh, obtain the charge density difference plot using VESA. And this video would be helpful for you. Please comment here or email to me your feedback and your questions and I will try to answer them. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified the next videos and thank you again for uh, listening very much.